Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar, Diagnose Your Spa and Wellness Experience Through Seven Senses. This session is being recorded and the archive will be posted to the UCI Division of Continuing Education On Demand Recordings page. My name is Lisa Huang and I'm a program manager here at UCI DCE. Below is a brief overview of what we are going to cover in this webinar session. First, I'll start off with a quick overview of Zoom features so you'll know how to submit questions to our featured speaker throughout the presentation. Next, I will provide you with information about our Spa and Wellness Management Certificate Program, which is a fully online program. I will cover the requirements, fees, and some upcoming courses for our spring quarter, which begins April 1st. I will then hand it over to Diana F. Mestre as she will be presenting on today's topic. And at the end of her presentation, we will have a brief Q&A session. Finally, I will leave you with my contact information so that you can send me any additional questions that we didn't address. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the webinar today, please send a chat message over to John from UCI Support and he will help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for Diana regarding the content of this presentation, please feel free to submit it in the chat panel and we will address it at the end if we have time. Um, when you are, if you are gonna submit any questions during the presentation or if you have a comment, please feel free to submit it to all panelists and that'll ensure that both Diana and myself see your question come in. Here's a brief overview of the Spa and Wellness Management Certificate Program. Our program provides comprehensive training for individuals who are both new to the field or already a part of the spa and wellness industries. Developed and taught by industry experts, the program will help you become proficient in all aspects of operations, including marketing and branding, finance, human resources, and more. Our offerings are unique because unlike a general business administration or management program, courses are specifically tailored to spa and wellness management. As a student, you will acquire the knowledge and skills needed to manage day-to-day -day operations and positioning for future growth. Our program is designed for a number of audiences as shown on this slide. Of course, we have spa and wellness employees, directors, and owners. If you're an individual with years of more technical hands-on experience, such as a massage therapist or esthetician, our program will help you acquire the skills you need for more managerial roles. The program is also beneficial to those who are brand new to the industry due to a career change. A major benefit of our online format is that you will be able to network and interact with individuals from all over the country and world who share a common passion for the spa and wellness industry. The certificate program is composed of four required courses totaling 12 units. All of our courses have been approved by the Paul Mirage School of Business here at the University of California, Irvine. And to be eligible for this certificate, students must complete all four classes with a letter grade of C or better, as well as a completed declaration of candidacy and request for certificate form. Since there is a small candidacy fee, I usually advise students to take a couple classes in the program before they apply, just to make sure they want to complete the full certificate program. As I mentioned before, our certificate program consists of four courses as listed below. We have Introduction to Spa and Wellness, Industry and Operations, Human Resources Management and Spa and Wellness, Spa and Wellness Financial Management, and Marketing and Branding for Spa and Wellness Businesses. The unit value of each course dictates how long each course will last. Each course is three units and will run for 10 weeks online. If you are brand new to the industry, we recommend starting with the introduction course during your first quarter. Since there are only four courses, students can earn their certificate in as little as six months. And when viewing the course schedule online, you'll notice that not all classes are offered every quarter, so please plan accordingly. In the upcoming spring 2019 quarter, we are offering the following courses, Human Resources Management and Spa and Wellness, Spa and Wellness Financial Management, and Marketing and Branding for Spa and Wellness Businesses. Each course is listed here with its start and end date, as well as the online course fee of $615. The course schedule and enrollment information are also posted on our website. Enrollment is currently open and students may enroll either online or by calling our student services office at the number provided.
Each course in our program costs $615, so you're looking at a total of $2,460 in course fees for the four online classes. Now, you don't pay the entire total up front. You would simply pay for each course individually at the time of enrollment. There is also a $125 candidacy fee for the program, so in the end, you're looking at $2,585 for the entire certificate program. Please note that amount does not include textbooks, which some courses may require. Textbook information is posted on the enrollment page, so you'll know if course materials are required before you enroll in a class. Today's presenter is Diana F. Mestre from Mestre & Mestre Spa and Wellness Consulting. With over 30 years of experience developing from concept to operation, a portfolio of more than 50 world-class spas of prestigious hospitality companies in Mexico, Caribbean, and Latin America. The company's mission is to create and design genuine signature experiences with a multi-sensory approach rooted in cultural themes while implementing world standards of excellence for the spa industry. We're very excited to have Diana logged in today to present on the topic, Diagnose Your Spa and Wellness Experience Through Seven Senses. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and hand the remote control over to Diana so that she can further introduce herself and also begin her portion of the presentation. Diana, can you hear us okay? Yeah, perfect. Um, Wonderful, take it, please take it away. Very well, I um, think I'm all set and ready. Uh, let me try, see if I'm, yeah, there we go, okay. Um, well, I'm very excited, Lisa. It's uh, um, a pleasure, a privilege to be here with your students and the audience that is with us that you know have signed up for this webinar. And, and I'm very excited to present you know this uh, form of diagnosis because it don't, doesn't only help you for you know to design the experience in the spa. It actually helps you for entire resort for you know you can use this tool in many many ways in everything that you design and create. So um, I call this the multi experience um, that seduces the senses. And we're going to, um, you know, um, take, you know, a, this tool as, uh, as, as a program that is going to help in design uh, all the experiences that we create for our guests uh, in, the, in the spas and wellness centers. You know, I like to start, you know, with uh, what Global uh, Span Wellness Summit um, told us in one time. That is so very, very important to stop selling um, isolated checklist of services and to really, really offer a total way of life. And John Cow also tells us that it's time to move to an event, you know, to move from an event-driven model and create a more sustainable connection and experiences. So, you know, there's a mission be behind these seven senses that we are going to present today. And that is that, to create, you know, going from experiential to transformational. And we do this through these seven senses. Um, and the seven senses, which we're going to be looking at today as the sense of identity, the sense of arrival, the sense of place, the sense of flow, sense of O, sense of departure, and sense of connection. When we use the seven senses, um, we're really able to create a total different dimension in what we are creating. So um, what, what is so important that we need to understand is recognize that each span when we said there must be really a unique creation. And you know, we don't want to be the same as everyone else. How can we be different? So this way that we can differentiate ourselves and create our own DNA is through activating a unique storytelling. This storytelling will give life to the architecture, the design, the programs, the treatments, the protocols, and the rituals. So why do we want to create a storytelling? For many reasons, because, you know, um, there is a whole study that is being, you know, done on what, what is important of creating a storytelling for a place or an experience that you are trying to convey or to create. And one is neural coupling, which means that the person that is listening to the story, it's also creating their own story in their minds. It's also mirroring, you know, and similar brain activities as a person that is telling the story. But we also generate dopamine because it's, you know, whenever we are able to convey a very emotional charged event, 
you know, um, we can remember that with graded accuracy. But also it's very important that, you know, when we're presented with facts and figures, we only use about two regions of the brain. But when we create a storytelling, we're using seven parts of our brain. So it means that the, you know, penetration and the message is much deeper than if we do not use the tool of a storytelling. Um, storytelling is the most effective way that we can merge meaning and emotion, uh, making the experience unforgettable. But there are some very important issues that we need to look at. You know, it's important to know your audience so you can convey the right storytelling. It's also very important to be authentic. You cannot just create a silly story. You know, you need to really get into creating a very unique story. And we need to train the staff to live and represent the storytelling. Um, you know, so you, we can really convey what we want to really make our guests live in that experience. And you need to make sure that the audience, um, it's really, you know, um, it, it does have that true essence that really sounds authentic. And also it's very important that that storytelling, it's conveyed to many other um, ways, not only verbally, but through design, through textures, through flavors. So sounds, aromas, and signature treatments, and rituals and protocols. So I'll give you an example. Um, for um, the Gran Velas group, um, we took several years to create their, you know, their, you know, along these 30 years, this you know, theme about branding or giving a name to the spa, it's been a struggle um, because it was always called the spa of the resort. So, you know, but we do bring special names to restaurants. Why not have a unique, you know, name that gives a DNA and it gives a sense to, to the spa we're creating. So for the Gran Velas, which they used to call the spas from Gran Velas, we call them SE, S -E, which it's a word that comes from Nahuatl, from a pre-Hispanic language, which means one, be one with mindset, myself and in harmony with the universe. There's three um, locations for the Gran Velas and we didn't want them to be clones of each other. We wanted each one to have its own personality. So for, you know, uh, Riviera and Ayurid, we created, um, the, you know, a totem of the butterfly and make this a transformational journey. Um, for a, the uh, Riviera Maya, we created the, you know, hummingbird, and this was the pathway of wellness and happiness. And for Los Cabos, we made a path of transformation with the dragonfly. But we also created four um, seasons, depending on the year. And each season, we named it differently. Rather than call it, you know, spring, summer, and autumn, we said renovation, joy, inspiration, introspection. So when guests repeat and come back again, they don't find the same thing. So we would shift the aromas and the flavors, like in renovation, we would use like, you know, lavender and jasmine and aroli. And in, you know, summer, which would be our joyous uh, season, um, we would go into using all of the citric type, you know, aromas and flavors. As well as in inspiration, we were going to use all the herbal elements and an introspection, which is like winter, we would use the incense and the cinnamon and the cedar, you know, those wood scents that would remind us of the, you know, this season. So that's how we began to give like this shape to creating a storytelling that our guests, when we would move from one property to another, would find its own DNA, you know, something to identify each place, not only by being named Sespa, but each one has its own path, you know, its own totem, its own flavors, and they all share these different presentations for renovation, joy, inspiration, and introspection. And this was also captured in all of the items, you know, the towels and the bookmarks and the logos and the letters and, you know, the welcome ritual. So there's a welcome ritual with a butterfly and there's another one with the feathers, which, you know, belongs to the hummingbird and another one with, you know, with the uh, dragonfly, which they actually do with, with flower petals. And, you know, it's like a very creative form of representing the dragonfly. So this is a story of, you know, how, how are we going to create the identity? So before we move to the next sense, you know, when you are designing your program, your spa, your experience, 
you know, think about your storytelling. Think about what elements go in this storytelling and think how you're going to combine this to bring that story into your audience. The next sense is the sense of arrival. And um, this is, you know, an image that has always impacted me because when I was here in Marrakesh um, and I saw this amazing detailed architecture and, you know, the uniform with this big, you know, caps, you know, this, it, it, it was just, it, it was something that captured my imagination, uh, the flavor of the mint tea, you know, it's something, it's just so alive in my mind. Um, just by looking at this picture, I remember that experience. So what do we need to do in a sense of arrival? For the sense of arrival, you know, the basis are to really make and stimulate, you know, all the guests with this sense, you know, all the five senses. Here we go with, you know, what are we looking at in the sight? You know, what, you know, how do we combine in the colors, the illumination, the candles? You know, how do we aim for tranquil and meditative spaces that really visually are very impacting? as well as sound. You know, sound really um, it conveys a sort of, you know, peaceful, harmonious, welcome atmosphere. Um, or it can be something very, you know, that really irritates you. So the, and, and that's one of the senses that I found that we need to develop more in the spine wellness industry because I hear the same um, amorphous, you know, relaxing music everywhere. So uh, this is the time to create very unique collections and sounds of harps and music. And, you know, so it goes, you know, very specific. We can even have, you know, a type of music that goes in the front area, which is a little more alive and very meditative in treatment and maybe some harp music in the water journey. So this whole thing about music and sound in um, having special frequencies of sound. I think has come the time that we need to develop this a little bit more so we can enrich the experience of our guests through special sounds. But it's also the smell, you know, aromas connects our limbic system and activate very special memories. The spa can create signature therapeutic uh, aromas that really transports the client and the guests to really um, a, you know, to a magical wellness sanctuary. And actually when you, you know, conduct that smell with the spa, people can even remember, you know, the place and the experience just by remembering the special signature aroma that that spa had. Um, the taste, you know, I'm trying to picture what people are, the ones that really know about flavor. And, you know, just to be able, it's not enough to have, you know, chlorophyll water and hibiscus water, or just, uh, um, you know, plain, you know, just water with some um, orange slice. We can be so much more creative. We can do, you know, some really amazing uh, mixtures of fruits and nuts and seeds and gluten-free, you know, mini muffins and crudities and frozen bites and, you know, uh, superfood bites. You know, this is a place that we can merge a lot of the flavors into the, into the experience. Um, and of course, touch. touch. Touch is about the tactile experiences that, um, that really encompass not only therapeutic touch of the body, you know, the body artisans and the therapists that touches, it's a very, very big part of our experience. But so is the texture of the sheets and the pillows and the floor surfaces and, you know, uh, the towels, whether the towels are rough or the towels are soft. I mean, it's everything that touches your skin. So creating a unique soothing spa and wellness ambience leads to a greater client retention, retail sales, and a word of mind advertising. But most of all is what really creates, you know, that sense of arrival. So when we do the trainings, you know, for the spas, we ask them to stop, close your eyes, you know, close your eyes and start, you know, in that point of arrival and see what you hear and smell, and then, you know, see, you know, what elements you're going to be adding to enrich that experience. Um, the sense of arrival also has to do a lot with architecture, that multi-sensory design. 
you know, the most and most memorable moments aroused from all our senses. And the spatter court needs to appeal to all the senses to promote a feeling of serenity and well-being. So when we're working with architects, um, we need to talk about, you know, incorporate some elements of uh, sacred architecture or sacred geometry. But also today, you know, the biggest trend is biophilic architecture, which is connecting people and nature. We need to connect with nature so much more than we used to because of this modern way of life, this concrete element that, you know, surrounds us. We need to really incorporate all the elements, water, fire, um, you know, air, all of the elements, metal, everything that we can create to design and connect with nature. You know, how we are going to work with the illumination, the light and the sound really makes an effect. So this is another way of, you know, evaluating what are we seeing? Are we having all of these, you know, uh, you know elements that really convey a multi-sensory design? Um, sense of arrival, when we talked about flavor, you know, what are we testing? We always, you know, create a signature welcome drink, something that talks about the flavor, which we'll talk about, you know, a sense of place in a moment, but it can also be a sense of place and a sense of arrival. You know, by creating these unique flavors as you come in, they give you this little shot of amazing flavor. Maybe it's maracuya with guanabana or some very wonderful tropical fruit or something, you know, some berry mix that, you know, has some mint leaves and it just has this amazing flavor that wakes up all the senses. And this is so simple, it really, you know, it's imagination in how we present everything that we are, you know, given the, the guests as they arrive. So all these um, welcome and farewell rituals are a very, very, very important part, you know, of the arrival. Because you do have different sense, of, you have a sense of arrival at the reception, but you also have a sense of arrival, you know, when you go to the locker room. And you have a sense of arrival when you're going into the water uh, ceremony or the water, you know, water journey facilities. And you have a sense of arrival to your treatment room. So all of these sense of arrivals need to be evaluated you know, so we can really see how we're designing this, you know, experience that our guests are receiving. Signature aromatherapy, you know, I am a very strong person in believing of the therapeutic value of, of essential oils. So the purpose of a signature therapeutic aroma blends is to bring that positive emotional response in our guests. It's really connecting them to really have this you know, sense of uh, transformation. And um, scientifically, really, you know, we connect with our emotional brain. Um, during the inhalation, these molecules go into our limbic system. And, you know, the limbic system really, you know, does take care of the blood pressure, the breathing, the memory, all of that. But it does connect us very strongly and it does trigger very important emotions. Uh, so inhalation of essential oils can have a very profound psychological and physiological effect. And that's why we need to give guests an option of an essential oil. We cannot impose, you know, like, I like geranium, so I'm going to use geranium and I'm going to impose that on all my guests because there may be a guest that cannot stand or has a very negative memory with geranium. So it's very, very important to have um, what we call, you know, like a selection of two or three different, you know, blends, either by intention, you know, aromatherapy can be different intentions. So maybe have a relaxing and invigorating and, you know, and uh, a joyous uh, blend, or we can have individual, you know, like lavender for balancing or rosemary um, to purify and mint to clear the mind. But we must give guests a choice. We cannot impose the, you know, our favorite essential oil on guests. We need to give a choice. Um, it, this mixture of sounds and vibration, um, it's very important to balance both things, you know, the aroma and the music. This, you know, the music that summons the spirit and aromas that immediately transport to a sense of serenity. So to experience and enrich the mystic sounds of harps and flutes and harmonize that with, you know, aromas of lemongrass and green tea, 
um, it really makes a difference in the overall experience that our guests will have. So um, we can, you know, personalize not only the aromas for our guests, but also the music. When we're in a treatment room, you know, I would like to have a choice on the music that I'm listening to. I would like to know if I can have a choice of maybe mantras or relaxing music or Zen music or spiritual music or American flu, you know, something that you really conveys so it's very strong because there's a great connection to the sounds. So the more options that we can give our guests, the more we personalize their experience. And we can, you know, minimum go two, you know, ideally go three, but you can always, you know, have, you know, in terms of music, like three or four different connections. You can even do music pairing and you can do tea pairing to different treatments. So it's very creative what you can do when you really begin to design the experience. Of course, a sense of arrival it would not be anything if we don't have the um, soul or the people element. A warm and sincere smile really makes people feel appreciated. And it also lets them know that they made a good choice in choosing your you know, spa or your wellness center. So this um, way of conveying a, a true sincere welcome is not only the smile, but also, you know, giving your full attention, your eye contact, remembering this personal details, you know, that makes each guest feel unique and valued. So a warm enthusiastic welcome and a warm smile is a vital part of our customer uh, experience. You know, having that eye contact and that warm smile is a very important part of our sense of arrival. And yes, you know, we can have the most beautiful spa, but if we don't have, you know, um, a receptionist that greets us with this warm, amazing smile, you know, the experience is lost. So we move into the sense of place. And, you know, sense of place is very vital you know, in architecture, in textures, in textiles, in colors, and speaks, uh, they let, you know, we need to speak the original language of the place, its culture and its people. So everything has to, you know, talk about, you know, when people come to the spa in Mexico, they hope to connect with the culture in Mexico. They don't want to know that they are you know, like in a spa that is similar in Paris or in Canada or in, you know, New York or wherever, you know, they want to, if they come to Mexico, they want to have something that connects them to their people and to their culture. So we start by, you know, having this very unique uh, locations, compelling emotional experiences, because the place, you know, it's just really amazing. The image you're looking at is Grand Velas. Riviera Maya, and in here, it's inside like a cenote. If you look to your extreme left, you will see like the rocks. And, you know, this spa just, you know, like the month, you know, the end of this month, just won the best spa in North and South America at, at the uh, World uh, in, uh, Wellness Award in London. So, you know, creating unique spaces, you know, gives its own sense of place. You know, one sense of place is that we need to say, okay, we are in Mexico, we are in Riviera Maya, we are in Gran Velas, we are in Cespa. And it has to have its own identity and its own sense of place. So, you know, creating these biophilic designs, it's about restoring our connection to nature. It's a fundamental shift in human consciousness that leads to a new ethic of responsibility for caring for the earth and our relationship to it. So this, you know, it's vital that when we design, we incorporate nature. And we incorporate regional treatments. So indigenous treatments that talked about our ancestral healing tradition, ancient wisdom and cultural heritage. So, you know, if we are, you know, in each place in the world, doesn't matter where it is, there is, you know, an ancient heritage. There's something that we can learn from the grandparents. There's, you know, healing traditions that need to be rescued. And like one of my biggest goals is to rescue so many of the amazing um, indigenous treatment from the pre-Hispanic area in Mexico 
and to let the world know, you know, something about, you know, what is this Bakalkonkov massage that Mayans use to, you know, to work and heal the body? Or La Manteada Maya, which uses like rebosos or, you know, these uh, scarves, which they do, it's like a thigh massage almost, you know, stretching your body. Or the Kukulkan massage, which uses different emblematic, you know, um, now what um, animals like the serpent and the jaguar. So you feel the strong, heavy steps of the jaguar. You feel the sliding is like a lumi lumi that is the serpents. And you create a, an amazing choreography that ends up being, you know, like, like this, that enriching experience where you connected with pre-Hispanic sounds and you know the choreography and the um, the dressing of the of the bed is with uh, embroideries made by the local people because there's also that important part of you know of uh, community of connecting with the people of the region sustainable practices that helps you know indigenous community to let, let their art be known. Um, we also, you know, use all of these elements, which are tradition, you know, in terms of the uh, um, plates and the elements that we use to reflect, you know, the art and the um, culture, you know, the copal and the little, you know, um, vessels that we use made out of this clay. So balancing authenticity and local experience with exclusive unique protocols and rituals is what's going to really give this sense of place. And flavors that, you know, the taste, the taste of the country, you know, really that moment that we devote to regain that energy for the body, those quiet moments in that relaxing area where we can try a fruit that we've never tried in our life or water that is, you know, totally regional, like, you know, we can create, you know, like the chaka leaf lemon water is amazing. And if you've never tried guanabana, it's uh, mint water, it's out of this world. And so you get to explore flavors in this country that you would not, you know, uh, you would not try it in any other part of the world, at least in some countries, it would be like a very unknown experience. So you have like all this, like this, what we're seeing at the extreme right is like, you know, like a, a, a lollipop that this is made of local fruits, you know, so you just put it with some, you know, special juice and you froze it and you give this, this little, you know, frozen bites as a compliment in many of the, you know, experiences that we're doing throughout the entire spa. Um, we move and now into the next sense, which is the sense of flow. And the sense of flow is where we are fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus. I mean, you really focus because you're so involved in the here and now, and you're really enjoying the process of the experience. So being able to connect, you know, to have that big experience, like a brand Maslow coined that word big experience, to describe that a sense of flow is an intense, joyous, and exciting moment where we feel more whole, integrated, connected with the world around us, aware of ourselves. And we have that sense of deep happiness. You feel so joyous, so happy, because you're truly, truly integrated into the present moment. To do this sense of flow, it needs to be an interrupted experience. When we do our trainings, we always say, any loud noise, disorientation of the guests, Maybe we don't have available robes or we don't have the sandal size correct for that guest. You know, there's excessive waiting or there's disregard for personal preferences and choices that our guests are asking us. There's a lack of timing or there's overly present, you know, because it also can be the other way around. It's like they, they're on top of you. You know, do you need anything? Is there anything else I can do for you? You know, and they're there, right? And they don't give you that space to really connect and flow. All of this is going to break the flow. So it's all about a harmonious transition. And when you are designing the experience of the spa, you need to look at this almost like a movie. How do we begin and how do we end? And what were the elements that broke this experience and how we can repair? So everything goes from one transition to the next. 
So for this, I created this um, diagram that will help you. You know, if you're a student, you can create your own personal experience by saying, how do I flow from one area to the other? Because normally when we lose the flow, it's exactly when we go between one element to the next. So maybe in the reservation, you know, they didn't give us our appointment reminder. And uh, so we are not sure what time we were supposed to arrive or they don't, we don't give the right information of the time they need to write ahead of time of their reserve treatment. And we focus saying, tomorrow your massage is at seven o'clock and people arrive at seven or five and their experience is not going to flow because they miss the whole introduction of the water journey because we fail to really present that storytelling and to prepare the guests to take this amazing experience. So the, all the process that needs to go into a reservation from the customer programs to the welcome beverage, to the spa brochure, to the information, to really selecting the right treatment for the right guests and to really describing the experience they're going to live and to prepare them to come for the check-in is the beginning of that flow. So when we come into the check-in, it's kind of like we're re ready to start our spa experience. So what happens? What is the sense of arrival? And we talked about this. You know, what does the spa smell like? What are they, you know, are they going to give me that amazing welcome, you know, drink or, you know, the, be you know, the welcome signature beverage? You know, it's the process going to be very op operationally driven or is it going to be expirationally driven? And what we want it to be an experience for the moment that we do the check-in. So we have all this amazing connection, this confirmation of the service, and then we're presented with our spa bottler or spa ballet, and we're taken into you know, the changing room. And so our spa bottler will, you know, show us our locker, will show us that, you know, what could break the flow? Well, you know, I have all this jewelry and all of this, and I don't have where to put my things. You know, I have to put it inside my shoe because there's not a little jewel box to put this, you know. Or, you know, I finish my water journey and I don't have a plastic bag to put my bathing suit on. You know, what kind of quality toiletries do we are offering? What are we doing in the sign of this water journey? Are we, you know, putting this mint and eucalyptus scent or rosemary scent in the steam room? Are we adding some kind of wonderful elements like maybe an argan oil ritual for the steam room? Or are we giving cucumbers and, you know, a romantic face cloth, you know, for the forehead? Are we offering special, you know, wonderful drinks or frozen bites to create this amazing experience? Are the bottlers there that they appear in the right moment at the right time and they're not overly present or they're never, to, you know, to be found? So this, you know, we connect them and escort them into the relaxation room. And in the relaxation room, what do we do? You know, we them with this you know aromatherapy warm pillow we offer a tea maybe some food and nuts because we did all the one hour water journey you know we tend to get our body tends to get cold are they you know some kind of you know warm fussy spa blankets that we can cover ourselves with is the music relaxing is the aromas amazing is the light dimming enough so i can even relax a little farther down and is the therapist presenting themselves at that moment and giving me that space and time and escorting me to the treatment room when the therapist connects and confirms the service you know are their voices soothing are they really connected with me is, uh, are the welcome ritual they're doing really unique and really sincere and authentic? You know, do I have a preference in aromas? Do I have a preference in music? You know, um, what is happening in the choreography? Is this therapy disconnected? Is she breaking the flow all the time? Or if this is just flows like a beautiful concert, you know, everything in place, everything at the right time, the light, temperature, the volume, you know, the setup, the warmth of the, you know, the, the texture of the sheets, all of it, you know, it's such an enhancement that we need to experience this to know if what we're doing really is, you know, an optimal experience in the treatment.
because a spa is not about giving massages or facials. A spa is about creating unforgettable, memorable, and impeccable experiences. So we need to design with great care and with great authenticity everything we are doing at the spa. And it doesn't end here. Because after the treatment, you know, after the treatment, I don't want to be rushed to the changing room and hello, goodbye, leave. I want to have my tea, my time. You know, I, I need to know that my, you know, um, body artist and therapist is giving me a prescription of what I need, is giving me recommendations, um, advices on how to optimize my experience. You know, maybe I'm giving, again, another aromatherapy neck pillow um, offer a variety of teas. And, you know, I have all these recommendations. And some spa butler comes and gets me to say, you know, I need to get back to the locker room. And it will be very happy to score me because I know my facilities very well. But a guest, for the first time, they mostly don't know if to go right or left or where this thing is or where I'm supposed to do or am I supposed to. To wait or so we need to anticipate everything for the guests so they absolutely know that they're absolutely taken care of that there's not you know like what am i going to do next or where do i go never because that will flow will break the flow um the checkout needs to be the same you know people come in and we need to you know really be courteous at the end you know, um, help them, you know, have this retail therapy so they can take the aromas and the taste and, the, you know, the elements that they use for memory and for remembering this experience. Um, you, know, in, you know, sometimes some spas ask for evaluation, some don't, you know, some send it later. The recommendations and in, in the next, you know, when we get to the sense of departure, we talk about a little bit more about the, the farewell gift or thought. And of course, if we can open the door for, you know, as a door courtesy, it's like saying, I'm so happy you were here. And it's a complete experience from the moment you walk in to the moment you walk out. And of course, we must always remember them. We must remember, you know, their visit, you know, their email, their anniversaries, keep in touch maybe once, three times a year. You know, and you have made a personal connection with your guests. And, you know, if you want to have this client experience management, you need to remember them. You need to know who they are. You need to know what their choices are. You need to know what their preferences are. And then they will come very loyal to, you know, you. So, sense of awe is described as a sense of wonder we feel in the presence of something vast that transcends our understanding of the world. People commonly experience awe in nature, but also feel a sense of awe in spiritual experiences, art, and music. So, this is what in hospitality we call those awe moments, you know, like, you know, how many times are we able to take, you know, the breath of our guests, you know, this is amazing. I can't believe this. This is beautiful. So obviously visually, you know, this is in, in Los Cabos. You're impacted by the facilities, by the pristine, impeccable, beautiful facilities. It's sometimes the first thing that makes you go like, oh, this is amazing, you know. Um, so very interesting study that was done about, you know, the sense of awe is that promotes altruism and a magnanimous behavior. And it actually was conducted by Dr. Paul Pieff, which is from the University of California, Irvine. And it was published in, you know, the social psychology. What, you know, the research on being able to generate this sense of awe in, in people, it helps them to get out of their selves, you know, their, maybe we could call it their small selves, and to be able to see the grandeurs, the gratitude, the, you know, their focus goes out into the welfare of others. So when experiences are, you may, you know, lose this, you know, connection to the, I need this, I need that, and you shift your attention toward entities, you know, where you trigger the tendency to, to engage in a behavior that helps others. So, you know, being able to create this awe experience in our guests will make them remember something that will not forget for many, many years. So we talked about, you know, first, you know, in the sense of all the architecture, the signing, 
with the genuine purpose of pleasing the senses. This experience will awaken the spiritual, cosmic, and magical force that transcends the unique and personal experience of each individual. Uh, you know, when, uh, you know, ask yourselves, when was the last time you had an awe-inspiring moment? When was the last time you said, oh, I can't believe this service. I can't believe this amazing, you know, uh, experience that I just went through. You know, it was absolutely perfect from beginning to end. So we need to be very aware of how we're creating these experiences from the people element to the design element to the protocol element. All of this will make a very impact on the sense of awe. Okay. Um, flavors and taste also is part of that sense of awe. Remember, we talk, and this also can be, you know, remember the sense of place because we can try flavors, but we visually, they can be beautiful. We, we need to present, you know, like this, what we see, this pink, you know, um, jug right here is pitaya. It's, you know, it's a cactus in, in, in Los Cabos and it's delicious. It's very fresh and sweet. Maybe it's the first time that, that you try this fruit in your life. And, you know, I remember my mom always said that whenever you would have like a new fruit, that you've never tried in your life before you were you know you were given a gift that would be you know like a, a wish and you you know you can make a wish you know because this was the first time you would try a fruit so that you've never tried in your life before so this is kind of like little stories you know stories and little stories that you can create with flavors and with um, um, all of these things are you presenting to your guests and how you present it you know where do you choose to place you know the glasses and the formats and how you present this is very very important that's why it needs to be gourmet gourmet you know and this just takes imagination and um, you also have visual elements and textures over the course of the expo experience unique programs and facilities are what creates emotion that restores your guests up you know that really resonate with your guests after they leave so creating a visual elements that really you know makes an impact and this was mentioned by amanda fraser which is from you know for travel um, guide you know that specializes in you know in in this um, luxury elements that it only takes flower petals you know to do this we also can do all signature treatments by incorporating, um, you know, different flavors, aromas, textures, and maybe like a morsel of some kind, you know, maybe you have a, a chocolate wrap, but you give like a little chocolate mousse as, as somewhere in between after maybe you, you take off, you know, after the shower that you take the, the mask of your body and, you know, your, you know, place back into the bed and you're giving this special flavor you know, in the middle of the treatment. So we start making this treatment gourmet, or you have a citrus, you know, a body and face treatment and way in between body and face, you, you get to try this, you know, orange, you know, um, little piece of orange or, or some kind of uh, frappe made out of orange or, or fr red fruits. So all of these elements will really enrich the experience and it's something you don't expect. So you are going to go, oh, wow, this is delicious. I never expected to take a body treatment where I would be given gourmet details or gourmet bites. Sound is also a sense of awe because, you know, hearing the sound also, you know, it, you know makes a transformational um, element in the experience. So more and more we're having sound bath and, you know, Tibetan bowls and, and starting and finishing with the tingsha. So, or the Tibetan bells, or the little, you know, the apasons, or, a, or like in the pre-Hispanic, we, we do the, uh, you know, this shell, which, you know, they, this, you know, it has an amazing sound. So this can also bring a sense of all into the experience. We move to the, you know, sense of departure, and I make a big, big, you know, element on this, because it's a farewell with appreciation. When you have friends coming into your house, you greet them. But when they leave, I'm sure you say goodbye. So it's exactly the same thing in spa and the hospitality industry. 
escorting each of our guests back to the dressing room and then to the reception, offering recommendations and giving them thanks for their preference and their visits creates a very special bond and sense of gratitude and loyalty from your guests and your customers. So um, this, you know, it's important, you know, to connect also with the retail therapy because, you know, retail therapy may help to restore a sense of personal control, a sense of worth and well-being. They also create memories of a special moments. I, I keep a lot of different elements in retail, little creams and aromas and things, you know, where I go to different parts of the world. And those remind me of that experience, the smell and the texture and everything in there. So another thing that I encourage everyone to do is what I call memory gift for a memorable experience. So we have, you know, even if the therapists or the body artisans create these little bracelets or you have little cards to say goodbye, it's like a, a little detail you give back to your guests. So when they leave, it says, we have this little special memory gift in appreciation of your visit. And, you know, like what we see in the center, they're called the eyes of God. And these are made by the therapist. And this is, a, you know, we hold a prehispanic um, uh, element for protection. And so many of our guests, even tear, have tear eyes because they say, oh, God, I was afraid to take a fly. And, you know, having this, I know I have like this element of protection. So you keep creating these stories, you know, for your guests. And you have one element that maybe will be in a bookcase and someone will say, and what is this? Oh, you're not going to believe it. This was this amazing element they gave me when I was at this spa and they give me this or I, I chose the right stone there's so many creative ideas that we do for the sense of departure but we must make a sense of departure because otherwise you know we're not really finishing this sense of flow the last step, um, element you know the last sense is very very important is a sense of connection genuine authentic emotional connection um, because um, it's service from the heart. You know, if we don't have the right people in the right place, you know, really doing, you know, this, you know, intuitive, exceptional, perfect timing service, then we need more training or we need the right people that love to serve people. Today's concept of luxury is being defined by the experience. So it's very important that everything that you do has a sense of connection. Because again, you could have the most beautiful spa, but without this personalized service, without this you know, eye connection, without this warm smile, the experience is void. So the end result of an experience is an emotion. And if we're able to create an elevated emotion, we can create a memorable and unforgettable experience. Through all of the elements that I just mentioned and we went through, through all these elements, we can create this experience. And you know what? It only takes imagination. We need imagination to create a sanctuary of the soul with spaces, products, and protocols designed to balance the senses, provide a transformative and unforgettable experience. But we also need lots of preparation and passion for detail. Preparation, implementation, and careful selection of materials, products, talented staff, rituals, and protocols with exceptional attention to detail is what creates that impeccable spa experience. Anticipating the needs of your guests, your, you know, your customers will show a genuine concern for the comfort and well-being. They will feel well taken care of and they will come back again and again and for that you need to train your staff you know when we do our trainings we do a role playing and we do a script so all of the staff knows exactly what they need to do and this um, role playing and these scripts are flexible because this is just like an age so they don't forget any of the international standards of service but then they're free to flow they're free to connect they're free to you know personalize you know, to make the experience of the guests even, you know, richer. For spa directors and spa managers, very, very, very important that they do look into some kind of training. We do have, you know, um, this, um, you know, this is one of the fields where, you know, we have a great deficit of 
you know, um, of all the, you know, from spa bottlers, receptionists, therapists, there's a great deficit in the entire world of, of uh, uh, positions to be filled. And we need train people. I was very, very lucky that I started my career under the guidance of Health and Fitness Dynamic with Dr. Judy Singer and Patty Martinson. And they were my mentors and they taught me, you know, and I, I don't think I would be where I am if I had not had that, you know, teaching, that schooling that, you know, I received from them. So in my time, you know, there was not this possibility of having this ability to, you know, have a management program. So do take advantage of that. And remember that wellness at workplace is the beginning of a good, you know, experience because if we don't treat well our, our um, employees, if we don't make them feel what you want your guests to feel, then we will not be able to really um, uh, transmit this passion, this love, this service, you know, this amazing experience that, you know, consultants create or your, um, you know, uh, spa director creates cannot be transferred because at the end of the year, it's your spa bottle and the spa therapies that connect directly with the guests. So we need to really be able to inspire our workforce so they can inspire our guests. So how do we create this transformative experience? So this is my final kind of a word in you know, in saying, in the midst of the busy and dynamic, oops, in dynamic um, uh, evolution of the modern life, the spa is a temple of relaxation, an oasis of physical, mental, spiritual renewal, an opportunity to connect with nature and with their own healing power, enhanced by organic materials and serene environments that relaxes the senses, water and music, aromas and light, create a perfect balance where the rhythms of life are complemented by the importance of taking the time to enjoy life. So, um, you know, this is um, the end of the presentation. And I really hope with this, you have a tool, a tool that you can even use in your home. You know, it's like, what is my sense of arrival in my home, my sense of place, you know, my sense of identity. It, you can use it in so many ways, but very special in the hospitality industry to create the most amazing and beautiful spa and wellness experiences. So I don't know if you have, anybody has any question, I'm right here. Great. Thank you so much, Diana, for all the information that you've shared with us today. We do have just a couple minutes. Um, if any of you who are logged in has a question for Diana regarding anything in her presentation, please feel free to submit it in the chat panel and uh, be sure to send it to all panelists. That'll ensure that both Diana and myself will be able to see your question. And um, Diana, I also wanted to give you a few minutes to scroll through your chat panel just in case um, okay. anybody submitted a question to you. Uh, during your presentation. Okay. Nope, I don't think so. I don't have questions. Mm -mm. Okay, I have one question that came in. What has been your most challenging project and why? My most challenging programs were at the beginning of my career, you know, like 30 years ago when I started because there was not this uh, common vision. There was not this you know, powerful industry. And it took me many, many years to conform this uh, idea of, you know, the senses that I needed to create. So at the beginning was, you know, hit and miss, you know, it really tried, this went really well here and that didn't go that well over there. And over the years, I, you know, I learned by doing, and again, thanks, you know, I had a lot of guidance from Health Happiness Dynamics, but, you know, it took me a long time to be able to connect and to have this, you know, this tool that helped me to create spas that are now award-winning spas in the world. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If any of you have any questions for Diana, feel free to send them via email as well after the webinar is over. If you think of anything, we will also be sending out a recording link to this webinar later on. Um, so feel free to send us any questions or comments that you may have, and I'd be happy to forward them on to Diana. Um, Diana, thank you so much again for presenting. I hope all of you enjoyed the webinar and gained some insight into the seven senses to improve a spa and wellness experience. Hopefully you saw some courses that may have piqued your interest, and we hope that you will um, consider adding our fully online certificate program to your professional portfolio. Um, this slide here has my contact information as well as 
my directors. So please feel free to contact us with any questions. And Diana, I did see, we have one minute. I did see a question come in. Um, any ideas on how to incorporate these ideas into a small existing family spa? Absolutely. You can go from, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, 300 square meter to 8,000 square meter. And all of these seven senses apply to some very small existing familiar, even more because you can create a very personalized uh, circuit from beginning to end where you are incorporating all these elements. You know, you need to create that sense of DNA. You need to create, you know, that sense of arrival, even if it's little, it needs to have a sense of arrival with all your senses. It needs to have a sense of place, a sense of all, you know, a sense of flow and you know, a sense of departure and sense of connection. So the same senses apply to the very, very little spa uh, to the big, big spa. Wonderful, thank you so much again. Thank you everybody for joining us. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you everybody. <laughs>